This video is inspired by Shelly from Shizzle Design and Dion at the Turquoise Iris. I attempted to create this finish two years ago in another video that failed. I never gave up and finally came up with a method that I love. For more inspiration, follow the links below to Shelly and Dion's Facebook page and check out the link to my old video and find out what went wrong and why it didn't work the first time. If you would like to recreate this finish, there are step-by-step -step instructions and more photos on my blog, debbiesdesigndiary.com. Say hi to everybody, Levi. What do you think? Oh my goodness, look, look, at, look. My dad is at a doctor's appointment, so I'm puppy sitting him. I bought this cabinet off of Craigslist and it's beautiful. It's solid maple. It's from the 1950s. The guy who sold it to me told me that it had been in his family forever. They had it professionally restored. All of the drawers slide in and out really easy. I started telling him that I had a YouTube channel and that it was gonna go in my house. And then the wife said to me, you're not gonna paint that, are you? I hesitated and then I said no really fast and then I changed the subject, started telling him how it was gonna hold my computer and I fell asleep feeling really guilty because I am definitely gonna paint it. I just thought that this would be a good opportunity to talk about painting furniture and the people who think that you shouldn't paint it versus the people who love to paint. I think it's like the Democrats and the Republicans. Both sides are very passionate about how they feel. If you try to have a discussion, it can get very, very heated and emotional. People will unfriend you on Facebook if you don't agree with them and Painting furniture is a lot like that. People really get upset when you paint wood. Levi, do you want to paint it? You think we should paint it? Yeah. I usually use a brush, but we're gonna use the roller this time because we don't want any brush marks in it. And we're gonna roll it on in a really thick coat. We are gonna do it kind of weird and, and haphazard. And it's gonna look really ugly before it looks good. That's what we're doing today. We're gonna take this amazing cabinet that I got from Craigslist. We are gonna paint it. We just want the paint to be thick and heavy with a roller and very, very patchwork looking. Look at this dog. I just, I don't know. This is probably gonna be distracting. Using a roller will give you a more organic looking finish. Because there are so many layers and the pattern is multi-directional, I didn't like the way the brush marks showed up going in several directions when I tried this two years ago. For me, the roller makes a huge difference in the outcome. We're gonna take this right here and whoa, 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 Levi. What happened? I'm gonna put mermaid tail next to the queen bee and then I'm gonna blend them together. Apply several colors in a random pattern, making sure that you have a good thick coat of paint. In some areas, I built up the paint to add more texture, and I overlapped the colors. I used Queen Bee, Mermaid Tail, and Bohemian Blue. You want to overlap the colors a little bit, but you also want to keep them separate. This is a very complicated technique. It's called slapping the paint on in a random pattern until it looks like a hot mess. There's no specific way to go about it. You just want to cover your whole piece with three different colors, use the roller, get it on thick. DIY paint is clay based with just nine natural ingredients. You can safely paint indoors without worry. It's starting to look really, really um, Good. I'm gonna fill in all of the blank spots and I'm gonna blend the edges together. I'm gonna pour out the paint. You want it to be like milk, like 2% milk or non-fat milk, but not half and half. And you want it to actually kind of run and drip down the furniture. Can you see it? It's farm fresh. Here's, here's the can. It's very important that the top layer is watered down. I did not do this the first time. 
Because DIY paint is clay based, you can blend it like butter or build it up to create a very heavy texture. You want the paint to drip and be almost translucent. I applied two very watery coats of paint, letting each layer dry completely. want to take a rag like this. Just get it all the way in the water and get it pretty wet. So I just like to get my the palm of my hand flush with the rag so that I have a big flat surface area. And then you just want to rub feathery soft and light. And it's, it's just going to start to look really delicious and decrepit and blend it out and watercolor light. I'm just going to rub it off in areas and if I take too much off then you can just paint some more back on. That whole crazy color situation is going to start to make sense now. Use a damp cloth and the palm of your hand to gently blend the paint and reveal the color underneath. I let the patchwork layer dry overnight because I didn't want the yellow to blend with the blue and turn green as water can reactivate clay paint when it's fresh. Remember, you can easily add more paint if you remove too much. It just takes a very light touch. In the areas where I built up the paint, I used a putty knife to create a chippy effect. Clay paint is very soft when you first apply it, but will cure to an adobe-like finish over time. See how it's just dripping. I'm just gonna pick an area. So maybe like right there. Oh, you can't see that. Very lightly dab it and let it drip a little bit and sort of dab it off. And then I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna blend it a little bit more. This last step is where all of the depth and the color come to life. Water down the same colors used in the first patchy coat and apply them again with a sponge brush. When the paint is wet, it will look very unblended, but as the paint dries again, the contrast is very subtle and beautiful. I've used my paint dryer to show how much the color changes as it dries. When you're happy with your finish, use sandpaper to outline the edges and add additional texture. Bringing out the dark wood in a few areas is the finishing touch. Can you see it right here? It's super duper creamy, buttery. You can almost use it like a moisturizer. DIY wax will change the color dramatically and make the paint look patchy, but it will even out as it dries. Don't freak out the first times. Go with flow, trust the process. It's gonna even out, it's gonna look amazing. When I first applied the wax, it made the finish look translucent and patchy, like I had ruined it. Allow the wax to dry completely and it evens out. Then buff with a soft cloth to bring out the beautiful sheen. DIY wax is soft, buttery, non-toxic, and easy to use. Next Friday, the news is coming to our store, so if you would like to sign up for the free furniture painting class, click the link below and you'll get all of the details. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on next Friday. We hope you can make it if you're in the San Diego area. And yeah, so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next videos. Fry DIY, Fry Die. Does that make sense? On January 27th, we're having a special event at the store, including a free furniture painting class. Space is limited, so visit my website for more details. To find a DIY paint retailer in your area or to sell DIY paint in your own store, click the link below. Thanks for watching. These are my new boots. They're like, um, 
They're like Ugg boots, but they're they they lace up the. They're Ugg like vegan boots, but they're not made by Ugg. They're made by I can't remember, but I'll put the link in the description box. 